morning, everyone. Those of you here in person and those watching on Facebook, we welcome you to worship here at Windsor United Methodist Church. My name is Linda Van Ruckel, and I will be one of the worship leader helpers this morning. Um, and we're glad that you joined us on this Pentecost Sunday. There is a sea of red and yellow and orange out there, and it's wonderful to see. Um, starting with announcements, um, we received word this week from the district superintendent, Ron Carlson, that he would like to meet with our uh, SPRC, our Staff Parish Relations Committee, this week, Tuesday, at which time uh, that committee will have the opportunity to meet the new candidate for our new pastor. Um, and so the meeting will be on Tuesday evening. Because it's an SPRC meeting, uh, it is closed and there, we cannot allow visitors, but you can be sure that we will let you know as soon as uh, we understand what's happening uh, via email and certainly next Sunday what the results of that meeting are. So pray for us on Tuesday night as we meet the new candidate to take the place of, to fill in for, to follow, is a better word, follow Pastor Latanya. Another announcement, I don't think it's in the bulletin this week, but it will be in the newsletter on Saturday, June 10. Mark your calendars, that's a work day at the church. So there will be work to do outside to clean things up. Uh, there will be work to do inside to wash windows, to organize some things so that no matter what your talents and skills are, there will probably be a task that you can fill for us. So we'd appreciate all the help we can get. Are there any other announcements that anybody has? Yes, Blanche. I became his grand, great grandmother for the second time at 8 30 this morning. Yay, wow. Blanche is a great grandmother. Uh, a little girl, right? Yeah, little girl. Congratulations. All right, with that, I will turn it over to Pastor Latonia. Cheryl, would you put the lights on? It just looks real dark out of there. We need some flames on the <laughs> This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said, let us gather together to worship. Beloved, it is wonderful to be with you this morning. Um, I'm Pastor Latanya, and I'll be um, as well helping with worship this morning. Um, again, for those worshiping with us by Facebook, we're so glad that you're here. Um, I do have one initial um, announcement. Next weekend is annual conference. Um, and so it starts on Friday. Um, there's a clergy session in the morning and then the actual session starts about one o'clock. Um, so annual conference will be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we elicit your prayers as we gather together for annual conference to do the, to the business of the annual conference, um, as well as have some good worship as well. So we elicit your prayers for, for all of those attending, for those delegates attending. With that, we, as we gather, we come with joys and concerns upon our hearts, and we want to um, offer those up unto the Lord. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray together? Oh, one other thing. In, as we pray this, when we get to the end, um, I'm going to add an additional prayer um, for this is, this is Memorial Weekend. Um, and so we'll have a moment where you can lift up um, those names that have um, passed. Um, that have served um, served us and served this country. Um, and so we'll have that time as well. So I will lead us in that as well. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we offer up these people and situations in our world today for those who need the necessities of life, food, clothing, shelter, relationships. For those suffering sickness and disease, be it physical, mental, or spiritual. Lord, be your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have suffered tragic events or natural disasters. Lord, be your mercy, hear our prayer. For our world, those in war-torn countries, for the political divides. Lord, be your mercy, hear our for those who are grieving loss, no matter the time frame. Lord, be your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are in abusive, evil situations. Lord, be your mercy, hear our prayer. For those suffering.
suffering from addiction. For those who feel alone or can't get the pain to stop. For those, oh God, who have served this country, we offer their names up unto you, O oh God, in this moment. And you can offer those names. Oh God, for those who don't know you and the power of your resurrection. Receive all these prayers, oh God, and those still resting on our hearts, minds, and souls. We offer these prayers with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If standing is comfortable for you, I invite you to stand for the call to worship. <clears throat> we shout our proclamation to all the world. Christ is still risen. Christ is still risen indeed. Like the disciples, we gather in this space, united by our relationship with the risen Christ. We come ready to receive what God has to give. Just as tongues of fire descended on the disciples, we receive the gift of the Spirit's power and inspiration. Just as the resurrected Christ breathed the Spirit onto the disciples, we receive the gift of the Spirit's peace and wisdom. As the life-giving and peacemaking Holy Spirit blazes through us today, we receive the gift of the Spirit's fire that unites us as the body of Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 420. Breathe on me, breath of God.
scripture reading, the gospel reading, is from the book of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, good morning, boys and girls. It is time for the children's message. This morning, I want to do something a little different. I want to share with you a book that I came across, um, which I have just fallen in love with, and that I think speaks to us in a powerful way this morning as we celebrate the Sunday of Pentecost. So the title of this book I've got the book on my PowerPoint so that they can kind of see the pages. Okay. So the title of this book is Josie Johnson's Hair and the Holy Spirit. Um, this book is by Esau McCulley, who is a New Testament uh, professor, and he wrote it for his daughters. Josie Johnson's hair is a wonderful adventure. It's different all the time. Some days it's a ponytail or pigtails or a curly afro. And some days Josie's hair has a mind of its own. Josie's church is celebrating something called Pentecost. Josie doesn't, does not know much about Pentecost, but she does know that she is having her hair braided and that she needs a new red dress. On Saturday, Josie woke, woke up early. She couldn't wait for her day out with Dad. After a bowl of cereal for Josie and a cup of coffee for Dad, it was time to go to Monique's. She was so excited that she ignored the imaginary freeze rays from her little brother, the karate chop from her little sister, and even the way her big brother ignored her. Monique's hair salon is a cute little pink building right across the street from All Nations Church. All Nations is where Josie and her family worship on Sundays. Monique sings in the choir at All Nations. She also sings while she twists and braids hair. Everyone says that she is the best voice in the city. At Josie's school, most of the girls have straight hair. It's the same when she watches cartoons and movies. Some days, Josie feels different, and different can be hard. As they waited for Josie's turn in Monique's salon chair, Dad nudged her. What are you thinking about? My hair. I'm thinking about how my hair isn't like a lot of other girls' hair. Just then, Monique called Josie's name and took her to the big seat to wash and condition her hair. Josie loved the warm wind of the blow dryer. Once Josie's hair was dry, Monique started working oil through it combing it, and dividing it into sections. As 
As Monique started the work of weaving braid after braid, Dad pulled a chair over so he could so he and Josie could continue their conversation. Josie, when God created the world, was there just one kind of fish or thousands? He asked. Thousands, said Josie. And when it was time to create the flowers, did God make them all red or all the same shape, Dad continued? God made them every color and shape. Josie thought for a moment, I guess it's the same for people. We're all different colors and shapes. But Dad, Josie paused, why did God make us different? Dad smiled, we're all different because God is creative. Each one of us is God's unique work of art. Dad continued, the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully made? Does that mean that we're scary, Josie wondered? Dad grinned. It means you are special and worthy of honor. All of us are. Josie, your black hair, black lips, and black skin are God's work of art. Josie giggled. But I'm glad I don't have to be stuck in a museum. Monique had been humming quietly as she braided Josie's hair, but right then she started singing louder. Two stylists joined in and then Josie started singing too because Melodies from Heaven is her favorite gospel song. As Dad's deep voice sang, fill me with your precious Holy Ghost, I know that song. His eyes shone bright. The song finished, but Monique kept hum humming as she finished her work. When Josie's hair was braided, Monique handed Josie a mirror so she could see the back of her head. What do you think? I love it. Thank you, Monique. Monique smiled and replied, go, off you go now. Other beautiful girls are waiting their turn. Next, Josie and Dad headed out to find a dress. As they looked around, Josie asked, what is Pentecost? After Jesus rose from the dead, he told all of his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the gift of the Holy Spirit. So they all got together to pray and to wait. How long did they wait, Josie wondered. 50 days. Then the Holy Spirit appeared as small flames above their heads, what the Bible calls tongues of fire. Dad replied, Josie imagined a small fire over her own head. Were they burned? They weren't, but the fire gave them the power to speak in different languages. Then they began to tell other people all that God had done. Dad smiled. Josie, Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is for all people. No matter what language they speak, the color of their skin, or the curl of their hair, that's what we celebrate on Pentecost. And red is for the flames of the Holy Spirit, exclaimed Josie. The next morning at church, Josie looked around and realized that, she, that her church was like Pentecost. It had all different kinds of people, and it was all so beautiful. As everyone stood and began to sing, sing, Josie looked up at her dad and whispered, Happy Pentecost. Happy Pentecost. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray. Eternal God, our Lord, we thank you so much for this delight.
delightful story that tells us, reminds us of the celebration of this day, of what Pentecost is really about. God, we pray that as we continue to hear um, your holy scriptures read about this great day, that you would speak to our hearts and our minds in this moment. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The story of Pentecost comes to us from Acts, the second chapter, uh, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under the heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of, a, each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Amalites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappa Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phygra, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what it was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon the slave, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portions of the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall, shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Will you bow your heads with me just briefly? Almighty God, thank you. Thank you for this worship experience. Thank you, oh God, for the prayers that have been prayed for the songs sung and shared for your word that has come for our hearing. And we pray, oh God, that it makes a difference within us, that it transforms us, renews us, that it makes us more and more into your image. Now, oh God, I give you thanks 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart let it be acceptable in thy sight, for you are indeed my Lord, my strength, my redeemer. In Christ's name I pray, always giving thanks. Amen and amen. It is Pentecost Sunday. And as Ms. Linda said, there is such wonderful celebration in this place. We, we even come um, sh sharing in color, right? And having this wonderful time of celebrating what's often known as, as the birth of the church. As the disciples had their, their, their mandate, right? To, to stay and wait upon the Holy Spirit. And it was on that day when they were all gathered together that the Holy Spirit came, visited upon them, and they received the Holy Spirit. As we look at this story, um, and, and I'm so thankful for, um, I, I, and I hope you appreciated the, the, the story through Esau McCulley um, the, the, to, his, to his daughters of, of Josie. But as we look at this story, um, there's a couple of things that I, I just want to make mention. As the disciples were there, it's, it's all, and it says all devout Jews from all the regions of the world were there to celebrate. And as that Holy Spirit came upon them, the Holy Spirit indeed empowered them to do something absolutely miraculous. The text says that they had the power to speak in other tongues. Not their own tongues, but other tongues. Uh, so that, that other people from other regions could begin to hear that this, this witness of the Holy Spirit, the witness of God, the power, the, all that Christ has done through the manifestation of these other tongues that had been uh, empowered to be spoken. That immediately speaks to me about connection. Not in our own power and might, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, these folks can connect. It goes on and it, it talks about all of the different uh, tongues that were uh, uh, that were that were spoken. And it was, it was somewhat confusing and bewildering to people of how this could come about. And it tells us that even some folks thought people must be just drunk, right? And Peter says, and says, oh, no, no, no. These people are not drunk as you, as you suppose. It is the power of the Holy Spirit as what was prophesied is being fulfilled here in your presence. And it ends by saying, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I think about the story that I, that I just read that Isa shares with us. And the message of that story, how Josie felt so different from, from other little girls that looked differently from her. And the message that, 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 that Josie's father shared with her is that we are all created different because God is just that creative. And as we are all created differently, all of us are fearfully and wonderfully made. And all of us are invited into the church of God. All of us, like on that day of Pentecost, when, when so many different languages and, and folks from different areas were there, and they were all connected by the power of the Holy Spirit. So they were welcomed, they were invited to that place, and they were connected simply by being a 
child of God. Oh, I think about the church today, or, or the supposed church of today. Are we a church in the great sense of all nations? Does the church look like that, that first beginning of the church? Does the church resemble folks from, from all different regions and areas? Does the church, is the church full of the Holy Spirit that welcomes, invites, and that connects us all one to another? I think often we try to be. But you know, it's also said that on Sunday mornings, the church is the most divided place because we often gather with folks just like us. And that's a good thing. But is that the church? I, I love this, this, this thought that really kind of challenges us challenges us to, to really ask the question, what ought the church to be? What is the purpose of the church? What is the work of the church? Beloved, I think the purpose and the work of the church is to welcome and invite and connect. And I believe that we all have work to do so that we might really resemble the church. Now, it may, it may feel very much like I'm speaking to us this morning, and I am, but I'm also speaking to every other single church, right? Regardless of denomination, often churches look like the likeness of them. I wonder. I wonder if we we work to be like Josie's church. Uh, the, the the name of her church. You, you remember what the name of her church was? All Nations Church. <laughs> that, that that all peoples from from different nations and and cultures and backgrounds and and whatever it is that they might be welcome. Invited, and that they might be connected. Connection comes from being in relationships. I remember we we did a workshop in this church of a few of a, a, a while ago, and one of the things we 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 discovered is often that churches can be friendly. They can be very friendly and, and welcoming, but. Do they make friends? Do they make connections? I think that's what the power of the Holy Spirit does. That we might connect with folks because they are our brothers and our sisters. That they are part of God's family. We are connected. So as I think about that first church and all the power, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit rests over you. I pray that even as you look up now, you can see tongues of fire above your heads. The, 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 the power of, of the Holy Spirit that would have you leave this place and welcome and invite and get in connection with others. That the Holy Spirit might do the work of the Holy Spirit. That you can connect with someone in 
powerful and meaningful ways, all for the glory of God. Do we look like the church? Are we the church of God, the church of Christ, the church of the Holy Spirit? Oh God, help us to be so. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the power of this message, for the power that you gave on that day of Pentecost. So others, oh God, might be able to fulfill your love in the world. Might be able to fulfill your promise unto us. Your promise of the Holy Spirit being with us, empowering to us to do what we cannot do in our own power or might. But empowering us to go out and to reach others for the kingdom of God. So that other can folk <laughs> might be collected, welcomed, invited, and connected, oh God, one to another. God, help us to see, help us to know, and give us power of the Holy Spirit to do that great work. In Christ's name, we pray in his blessed promise for us and unto us with great thanksgiving. Amen and amen. A moment a prayerful silence. Amen. You are now invited to join me in this time of confession. Let us confess together. Almighty God, who sent the promised Holy Spirit to fill disciples with willing faith, we confess that we resist the work of your Spirit among us, that we are slow to serve you and reluctant to spread the good news of your love. God, have mercy on us. Forgive our divisions, and by your Spirit, draw us together. Create in us a desire to do your will and be your faithful people for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us by the power of the Holy Divine, and in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Now we have the wonderful opportunity to collect our tithes and offerings. We want to be mindful of the, uh, the gratefulness jar in the back with the small hearts. Um, I encourage you to take some of those hearts and pass them out. Um, to others that pass your journey. It's a way to, to celebrate and give witness to, to all that God has done. Let us now collect our tithes and our offerings. <laughs>
If it's comfortable for you, will you please stand as we share in our doxology, our song of praise.